Hey guys, welcome back to Mo's Game Table. Today I'm going to do another video on storage. I've done two prior ones where I just shared with you my ways of storing my counters, my cards, bits and bobs for games to maximize the efficiency of the box, as well as make it easier to get from the box out onto the table. Today I want to look at one specific solution, and that is the Ammo Crate from Lock and Load Publishing. This is a big 3-inch box, and it's got the look of an Ammo Crate for an 81mm mortar. At the bottom, you have a, an area where you can put the contents either with a magic marker or slap a label on it. You get the same thing on the left-hand side as well as on the right-hand side. On the back, you got a cool Kilroy Was Here uh, graphic, which I think is a pretty neat little touch. But overall, this is a really cool storage solution. I bought a bunch of these from the Lock and Load site, and I recommend you guys checking them out as well. You can use these things for a lot of different uh, storage solutions. If you've got magazine games, if you've got Ziploc games, you can take them, throw them in here, and that way you don't have to worry about it. The coolest thing about this is not only can you store your games in here, but the boxes all come with these deep dish counter trays, three of them. And these are definitely the best deep dish counter tray now on the market. The only one prior to that was the DVG trays, and they're problematic as we looked at in the videos before. The trays on these are really solid because you've got a smaller as you can see a smaller top right it doesn't go all the way to the lip of the bottom and one of the problems when you're using the dvg trays is with that lip going to the bottom you go to pick it up you're going to end up grabbing the top of the tray and you're going to pull the top of the lid off very easily this with the way it's set up you're not going to and on top of that these lock into place i didn't put them down they lock into place so you're not going to have that problem with these which is fantastic. Now I know Lock and Load did a video where they put some counters in a tray and they shook it upside down to prove that these will not fall off. That is true. They're not going to fall off, but depending on how many counters you have in a tray, it's not something I would necessarily want to do because I'm going to show you here in a second what I do with my World of War 85 uh, counters. And there's a lot of counters. They're big, beefy counters. And I'm not going to shake that upside down because I, I would bet you that more often than not, it's probably going to, the tray is going to fall off. But that's not what a counter tray is for. It's not to be a locked in solution like that. It is meant to keep your trays organized, your counters organized in the, in the uh, different wells and to keep them secure. With the DVG tray, you can't get that, but with these, you definitely will. Now, let me show you what I did with my World of War 85 counters. And here is how I have all of the World of War 85 counters stored in the three deep dish trays from the Lock and Load Publishing Ammo Crate. I've got the base game as well as the expansions. Uh, you can see I had to reuse the label from the GMT counter trays that I was using for Storm and Steel Second Wave as well as Defensive Frankfurt. I uh, just peeled them off real carefully and slapped them on there. They may not look great, but they serve their function. And I used the tray dividers, which I had uh, done up and I posted up on the lock and load site as well as on BGG. So if you have deep dish trays and you want to use these little uh, tray dividers, feel free to grab them off the lock and load site or off of uh, BGG. It makes it easier to maximize the efficiency of, of putting in as many counters as you can per tray or per well because otherwise you're just gonna be slapping stuff in on top of each other and then you have to sort through them and try to find out what the counter is that you want if you just mix and match. If, this way you can break down the counters by type and like over here, I've got them broken down by not only formation, but also unit type as well. So I've got like infantry and armor all separated out as along with breaking them down by the different unit colors uh, to make it easier for me to find uh, what units I need for the, for the uh, scenario that I'm going to play. Now, like I said, Lock and Load did that video where they're going to shake the thing upside down. I'm not going to, but I will show you that you can turn these sideways and not have to worry about the tray popping off and your counter spilling everywhere. You shouldn't be handling your trays that way anyway, but if you did, if you go to handle something, hand something to somebody and you put it down and it kind of goes cockeyed, you don't have to worry about the tray popping off. And like I said, the best part about it is you don't have to worry about grabbing into the box and grabbing the top of that, that lip of the top of the tray and peeling it back because it's it's all the way uh, tight to the sides of the counter tray itself and the only lip is the one that is for the base of the counter tray but this is a fantastic storage solution and you can use these for a uh, multitude of things like i said you can use it for their world of war 85 you can use it for anybody's games uh, regardless of the the counter size although i definitely wouldn't necessarily say you would use these for uh, half inch counters 
unless you're going to be using, uh, a, if it's for a game that has a lot of half inch counters, then I would definitely say you're going to need tray dividers in there as well uh, to break it down. But uh, I, I definitely think the tray dividers are a fantastic way of maximizing the well usage in each of the trays because that's the way I look at it is you want to maximize your storage to the most benefit you can to make it easier to sort your units, find them and get them on the table so that way you can play the games faster. So there you have it, a look inside the ammo crate from Lock and Load Publishing. Like I said, three inch box and you've got these three deep dish counter trays inside which are fantastic. Uh, the, the locking tops just make it a killer option for putting away all the counters that you want and not having to worry about them jostling about the top of the tray coming off while you have uh, the trays inside the box and all your counters spilling out or picking up the counters and knocking the counter tray the top off and knocking your counters everywhere. This is definitely the go-to solution for me for deep dish counter trays. I ended up buying like four sets of these and I think they were $20. They still may be $20 right now for the uh, box as well as the three counter trays. Now that may sound expensive, but think about it like GMT sells their three inch boxes for I think like around $8 or $6 or something like that without any counter trays and the counter trays they don't have deep dish all they have is the standard GMT size that, that smaller one which are fantastic and used for most war games but for any games that you're using bigger counters and a lot of them uh, deep dish counter trays are definitely the way to go and the solution there is lock and load publishing is the go-to for that well I hope that helps you guys out if you're curious about this one you have any comments or questions post them down below Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.